Welcome to Growth Mindset Company, where we unravel the complexities of the business world and transform them into knowledge that empowers you. Today, we're embarking on an insightful journey through the procurement process, the critical aspects of project management and business operations that often remain shrouded in mystery. We'll dive deep into the nuances of letters of intent, low I, letters of acceptance, low I, and contract agreements, key documents that play pivotal roles in turning project ideas into reality. From the initial spark of identifying a project needing the final handshake of project completion, we're covering it all. Whether you're a budding entrepreneur, a seasoned project manager, or simply curious about the inner workings of business deals, this exploration is designed with you in mind. So if you're ready to demystify the procurement process and gain actionable insights that can propel your projects or business forward, you're in the right place. Don't forget to subscribe to Growth Mindset Company and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our educational content. Let's dive in and discover together how strategic documents like LOI, LOA, and contract agreements shape the success of projects and partnerships. A letter of intent, LOI, under International Competitive Bidding, ICB, is a formal document that indicates a party's intention to enter into a contract with another party, following a competitive bidding process on an international scale. ICB is a procurement process that allows various suppliers or contractors from different countries to submit their bids for supplying goods, works, or services. This process ensures transparency, fairness, and competitiveness, aiming to get the best value for money for the procuring entity. Here's an overview of the role and components of an LOI in this context. Role of LOI in International Competitive Bidding 1. Preliminary Agreement the LOI serves as a preliminary agreement between the procuring entity and the successful bidder, indicating the intention to proceed with contract negotiations based on the terms and conditions outlined in the bidding documents and the bidder's proposal. 2. Confidence Building It provides confidence to the successful bidder that they have been selected for the project, allowing them to begin mobilizing resources or obtaining necessary clearances and guarantees for the project. 3. Framework for Negotiation The LOI outlines the basic terms of the agreement, serving as a framework for detailed contract negotiations. 4. Legal Standing While an LOI may not be legally binding in terms of the full contract obligations, it can have legal implications, especially if it specifies any binding terms or conditions to be adhered to by both parties during the negotiation phase. Components of an LOI under ICB an LOI under international competitive bidding typically includes the following components. 1. Introduction, identification of the procuring entity and the successful bidder, along with a reference to the ICB process and the specific tender. 2. Project description, a brief description of the project, goods, works, or services to be procured. 3. Selection notification, a statement indicating that the bidder has been selected as the successful bidder based on the evaluation of bids received in response to the ICB. 4. Terms and conditions, outline of the key terms and conditions that will form the basis of the contract negotiations, including any specific requirements from the bidding documents that need to be adhered to. 5. Next steps, description of the next steps in the process, such as contract negotiation, expected timelines, and any actions required from the successful bidder. 6. Legal implications, any binding terms within the LOI, such as confidentiality obligations or exclusivity periods during negotiation. 7. Closing, formal closing with the date of the letter, signatures from authorized representatives of the procuring entity, and an invitation for the successful bidder to confirm their intention to enter into contract negotiations. The issuance of an LOI in the context of international competitive bidding is a critical step that moves the procurement process from the bidding phase to contract negotiation. It signifies the procuring entity's intention to enter into a contract with the successful bidder and sets the stage for finalizing the terms of the contract. International Competitive Bidding, ICB, is a procurement method used by governments, international organizations, and corporations to procure goods, works, and services. It involves inviting and receiving bids from eligible suppliers or contractors from any country. ICB is characterized by its open, transparent invitation to bid, allowing participation from a wide range of bidders across the globe. This method is often mandated by international financing institutions, such as the World Bank, for projects they finance to ensure a fair and competitive process. The primary objectives of ICB are to 
1. Ensure transparency. ICB processes are designed to be open and transparent. All bidding documents are made available to interested parties, and the criteria for bidding and selection are clearly outlined from the start. This openness helps prevent corruption and favoritism, ensuring that all bidders have equal access to information and equal opportunity to compete. 2. Promote fairness. By allowing companies from any country to participate, ICB ensures that no potential bidder is unfairly excluded. The process is governed by pre-established rules that apply equally to all participants, thereby promoting fairness in the selection of the winning bid. 3. Achieve value for money. One of the core objectives of ICB is to obtain the best value for money for the procuring entity. This doesn't necessarily mean selecting the lowest bid, but rather the bid that offers the best quality, efficiency, and cost-effectiveness over the life cycle of the product or service being procured. The competitive nature of ICB encourages bidders to offer their best terms in order to win the contract. 4. Enhance quality and innovation. The international scope of ICB encourages the participation of a diverse range of suppliers and contractors, which can lead to a higher quality of bids. It also fosters innovation as firms compete not just on price, but also on technical and qualitative factors. 5. Strengthen international cooperation. ICB facilitates cross-border trade and cooperation. It allows firms to access new markets and contributes to the economic development of participating countries by opening up public procurement to international competition. Implementing ICB involves several key steps, including the preparation of clear and detailed bidding documents, advertisement of the bid internationally, fair and transparent bid evaluation processes, and the awarding of contracts based on predefined criteria. The process is monitored to ensure adherence to the principles of transparency, fairness, and competitiveness. International competitive bidding plays a crucial role in global procurement practices by ensuring that procurement processes are transparent, fair, and competitive, leading to the selection of bids that offer the best value for money. It not only helps procuring entities achieve their objectives, but also promotes international trade and cooperation. The International Competitive Bidding ICB, process is a structured and transparent procedure designed to ensure fairness, transparency, and the best value for money in procurement activities. It involves several key stages, from the initial announcement of the tender to the final awarding of the contract. Here's an overview of these stages. 1. Preparation of bidding documents. Drafting of documents, the procuring entity prepares detailed bidding documents that include instructions to bidders, the scope of work, technical specifications, bid submission requirements, evaluation criteria, and contract terms and conditions. Review and approval, these documents are reviewed for completeness and compliance with relevant laws and regulations, and approved for publication. 2. Announcement of the tender. Publication. The tender is announced publicly, often through multiple channels including official websites, international trade journals, and newspapers to ensure wide visibility. International notification. Special attention is given to notifying potential bidders from various countries in line with the international nature of the bidding. 3. Pre-bid meetings and clarifications. Pre-bid meetings, optional meetings may be held to discuss the bidding documents and address any queries from potential bidders. These meetings are aimed at ensuring that all bidders have a clear understanding of the requirements. Clarifications, bidders can request clarifications on the bidding documents and the procuring entity provides responses to ensure all bidders base their bids on the same information. 4. Submission of Bids Bid preparation. Bidders prepare their bids according to the instructions in the bidding documents, including technical proposals and financial offers. Bid submission. Bids are submitted by the deadline specified in the bidding documents, usually in a sealed format to maintain confidentiality. 5. Bid opening. Public opening. Bids are opened in a public session where the names of the bidders and the bid prices may be announced. This stage enhances transparency in the bidding process. 6. Evaluation of Bids Technical Evaluation Bids are first assessed for their technical compliance with the specifications and requirements outlined in the bidding documents. Financial Evaluation Financial bids of technically compliant proposals are evaluated. This may involve comparing prices or using more complex evaluation models to assess value for money. 7. Negotiations 
clarifications and adjustments. In some cases, negotiations or clarifications may be conducted with the bidders to resolve minor deviations or to understand the bid in greater detail. This stage is not for altering the fundamental nature of the bid, but for clarifying any ambiguities. 8. Awarding of the contract. Selection of the winning bid. The contract is awarded to the bidder whose bid has been determined to be the most responsive to the bidding documents, offering the best value for money, and meeting the evaluation criteria. Notification. The winning bidder is notified, and contract negotiations begin to finalize the terms and conditions. 9. Contract signing and performance. Contract finalization. The contract is signed by both parties, formalizing the agreement. Performance of the contract, the winning bidder then proceeds to deliver the goods, services, or works as per the contract under the supervision of the procuring entity. 10. Post-award review. Evaluation. After contract execution, a post-award review may be conducted to assess the effectiveness of the ICB process and to identify lessons learned for future procurements. Each stage of the ICB process is designed to ensure that the procurement is conducted in a manner that is fair, transparent, and competitive, ultimately leading to the selection of a bid that offers the best combination of quality and value for the procuring entity. The issuance of a letter of intent, LOI, is a strategic step in the procurement and project management process, particularly in the context of large and complex projects. An LOI serves as a formal indication that the procuring entity intends to enter into a contract with the selected bidder pending final negotiations and contract signing. This preliminary agreement is crucial for enabling early project mobilization and initiation of work, offering several benefits to both the procuring entity and the contractor. Here's how an LOI facilitates this early start. 1. Resource Mobilization Human resources, with an LOI in place, the contractor can confidently begin assembling the project team, including hiring or allocating engineers, project managers, and other key personnel needed for the project. This early team formation allows for immediate project planning and execution once the contract is finalized. Material and equipment, contractors can start procuring critical materials and equipment, ensuring that long lead items are ordered in time to meet the project schedule. This is particularly important for items that have long manufacturing or delivery times. Financial resources, an LOI can also assist in securing financing for the project. It provides a basis for the contractor to approach financial institutions for loans or credit lines, as it indicates a forthcoming contract and revenue stream. 2. Initiation of preliminary work. Site preparation, depending on the terms of the LOI, the contractor might begin preliminary site work, such as site surveys, soil testing, or other preparatory activities that do not require significant financial investment but are time-consuming. This ensures that the project is not delayed waiting for contract finalization. Design and engineering work, for projects where the design is part of the contract, the LOI allows the contractor to start the necessary engineering and design work. This early start can be critical for adhering to project timelines, especially for complex projects requiring detailed design phases. 3. Permits and approvals Regulatory approvals, the LOI can enable the contractor to begin the process of obtaining necessary permits and regulatory approvals. Since this process can be lengthy, starting early helps in avoiding potential delays once the project officially kicks off. Community and stakeholder engagement, early engagement with local communities and stakeholders can commence, laying the groundwork for smooth project execution. This is particularly important for projects with significant environmental and social impacts. 4. Risk Mitigation Market risks, by allowing early procurement of materials and hiring, an LOI helps mitigate risks associated with price fluctuations and availability of skilled labor. Project delays, early mobilization of resources and initiation of work can significantly reduce the risk of project delays, ensuring that critical milestones are met. 5. Building confidence Stakeholder confidence, an LOI signals to all stakeholders, including suppliers, subcontractors, and financial institutions, that the project is moving forward. This builds confidence and facilitates smoother interactions and transactions. Investor and market confidence, for publicly traded companies, an LOI can positively impact investor confidence and potentially the company's market value, as it indicates future business and revenue. An LOI is a powerful tool in the early stages of project mobilization, allowing both the procuring entity and the contractor to initiate critical activities pending the final contract. 
It not only facilitates a smoother transition to the active project phase but also helps in managing risks associated with delays and market fluctuations. By enabling early mobilization of resources and initiation of work, an LOI plays a crucial role in ensuring the timely and efficient delivery of projects. During the bid evaluation phase of a procurement process, particularly in the context of International Competitive Bidding ICB, a letter of intent LOI, can serve as a strategic tool for assessing and engaging with potential contractors. While the primary function of an LOI is to indicate the procuring entity's intention to enter into a contract with the selected bidder, its use during the bid evaluation phase can facilitate a more nuanced assessment of bidders and enhance the engagement process. Here's how an LOI can be effectively utilized during this critical phase. 1. Clarification and Preliminary Assessment Bid clarifications, before issuing an LOI, the procuring entity may engage with bidders to clarify certain aspects of their proposals. This interaction provides an opportunity to assess the responsiveness and communication effectiveness of potential contractors, which are important factors in project success. Preliminary commitment, issuing an LOI to a bidder can be a way to gauge their commitment and readiness to undertake the project. The response to the LOI can offer insights into the bidder's enthusiasm, resource availability, and potential for timely project initiation. 2. Technical and Financial Viability Technical solutions, through discussions surrounding the LOI, the procuring entity can delve deeper into the technical solutions proposed by the bidders. This can involve evaluating the feasibility, innovation, and sustainability of the proposed solutions in a more interactive manner than the written bid alone allows. Financial stability, the process of issuing an LOI may include a review of the bidder's financial stability and capacity to undertake the project. This can be particularly important for large-scale projects requiring significant financial resources. 3. Risk Assessment Identifying risks, engaging with potential contractors through the LOI process allows the procuring entity to identify and assess project-specific risks from the contractor's perspective. Understanding these risks early on can inform the final contract terms and risk mitigation strategies. Contractors' risk management capability, the interaction may also reveal the bidder's ability to manage and mitigate risks, showcasing their experience and expertise in handling similar projects. 4. Compliance and Due Diligence Legal and regulatory compliance, the LOI process can include a preliminary review of the bidder's compliance with legal and regulatory requirements. This is crucial for ensuring that the project will not face compliance-related obstacles once underway. Due diligence, the procuring entity can conduct due diligence on the bidder's past performance, reputation, and ethical standards as part of the LOI process. This helps in selecting a contractor who not only meets the technical and financial requirements, but also aligns with the procuring entity's values and ethical standards. 5. Negotiation and Finalization Terms and conditions, while the LOI itself may not finalize the contract terms, it sets the stage for negotiating terms that are favorable to both parties. This can include discussions on pricing, timelines, quality standards, and other contract specifics. Building trust and partnership, the process of issuing and responding to an LOI can help build a foundation of trust and partnership between the procuring entity and the potential contractor. This early relationship building is beneficial for the smooth execution of the project. An LOI is not just a precursor to contract signing, it is a versatile tool during the bid evaluation phase that enables a deeper engagement with potential contractors. By facilitating clarification, technical and financial assessment, risk identification, compliance checks, and preliminary negotiations, an LOI contributes to a more informed and nuanced selection process. This strategic use of an LOI enhances the likelihood of project success by ensuring that the selected contractor is not only capable of delivering the project but is also a committed and compliant partner. Shortlisting and Preliminary Engagement the process of shortlisting bidders through letters of intent, LOIs, and its subsequent impact on the final bidding decision is a nuanced aspect of procurement, particularly in complex and high-value projects. This approach allows procuring entities to engage more deeply with potential contractors before making the final selection. Here's an overview of how this process unfolds and its implications. Process of shortlisting through LOIs 1. Bid Evaluation After the initial evaluation of bids based on predefined criteria, the procuring entity identifies a subset of bidders that meet the technical, financial, and operational requirements most closely. 2. Issuance of LOIs LOIs are issued to these shortlisted bidders. 
The LOI typically indicates the procuring entity's interest in further engaging with the bidder to clarify, negotiate, or delve deeper into the proposal's aspects. It's important to note that an LOI at this stage does not guarantee a contract but signals serious consideration. 3. Response to LOIs Shortlisted bidders respond to the LOIs, often providing additional information, clarifications, or expressing their commitment to the project. This response is crucial as it demonstrates the bidder's interest and readiness to proceed. For preliminary engagement, the procuring entity may engage in preliminary discussions or negotiations with the shortlisted bidders. This engagement can cover technical solutions, financial proposals, project timelines, and other critical aspects of the project. Impact on final bidding decision 1. Enhanced understanding of proposals, through LOIs and subsequent engagements, the procuring entity gains a deeper understanding of each bidder's proposal. This can highlight strengths or weaknesses not apparent in the initial bid documents, influencing the final decision. 2. Assessment of commitment and capability, the process allows the procuring entity to assess the genuine commitment and capability of each bidder to deliver the project. Bidders who are responsive, engaged, and demonstrate a clear understanding of the project requirements are often viewed more favorably. 3. Negotiation of terms. Preliminary negotiations can lead to adjustments in the proposals that are beneficial to both parties. This could include cost adjustments, timeline changes, or modifications to the scope of work, which could influence the final selection. For risk mitigation, engaging with bidders before the final decision helps identify and mitigate potential risks. Understanding each bidder's approach to managing project risks can be a decisive factor in the selection process. 5. Building a foundation for collaboration, the LOI process starts building a relationship between the procuring entity and the potential contractors. A bidder's willingness to collaborate and communicate effectively during this phase can be a positive indicator for future project success. 6. Transparency and fairness. By engaging with multiple bidders through LOIs, the procuring entity ensures that the final decision is made based on a comprehensive assessment of each bidder's proposal and interactions. This approach supports the principles of transparency and fairness in the procurement process. Shortlisting bidders through the issuance of LOIs and engaging with them before making the final bidding decision is a strategic approach in procurement. It allows for a more informed and nuanced selection process, ensuring that the chosen contractor is not only technically and financially qualified but also committed and capable of delivering the project successfully. This method enhances the procurement process's transparency, fairness, and effectiveness, leading to better project outcomes. LOI during the bid evaluation process The use of a letter of intent, LOI, during the bid evaluation process in International Competitive Bidding, ICB, plays a significant role in streamlining the selection process, ensuring transparency and fairness, and addressing any disputes or clarifications. Here's how the LOI is integrated into these aspects. Selection Criteria, Evaluation of Bidders and Role of LOI In the ICB process, bidders are typically evaluated based on a combination of technical and financial criteria. The technical evaluation assesses the bidder's ability to meet the project's specifications, quality requirements, and performance standards. The financial evaluation, on the other hand, considers the cost-effectiveness of the bid. Communicating preliminary selection, the issuance of an LOI to a bidder signifies their preliminary selection based on the evaluation criteria. It indicates that the bidder's proposal has been deemed technically and financially acceptable, subject to further negotiations or clarifications. Basis for Engagement The LOI serves as a basis for engaging with the selected bidder to refine project details, negotiate terms, or address any minor discrepancies in the bid before finalizing the contract. Transparency and Fairness in the LOI Process Transparency and fairness are fundamental principles in ICB, ensuring that all bidders are treated equally and that the procurement process is open and competitive. Clear criteria and process, the LOI process must be outlined in the bidding documents, including the criteria for issuing an LOI and its implications. This ensures that all potential bidders understand the significance of an LOI and the steps following its issuance. Equal treatment, when issuing LOIs, it's crucial that all bidders who meet the selection criteria are considered equally. The decision to issue an LOI should be based solely on the evaluation criteria specified in the bidding documents. 
public disclosure, to maintain transparency, the procuring entity may publicly disclose the issuance of an LOI, including the reasons for its issuance, while respecting confidentiality agreements. This helps maintain trust in the procurement process. Handling disputes and clarifications Disputes and clarifications are common in the bid evaluation process. The LOI can play a role in addressing these issues effectively. Basis for clarification The LOI can specify areas where the procuring entity seeks clarification or additional information from the bidder. This targeted approach helps in resolving specific concerns or discrepancies in the bid. Dispute resolution mechanism In cases where a dispute arises either regarding the issuance of an LOI or the bid evaluation process, the LOI can outline the mechanisms for dispute resolution, such as mediation or arbitration, ensuring that there is a clear path to address grievances. Feedback to unsuccessful bidders While the LOI communicates the outcome to the successful bidder, it's also important to provide feedback to unsuccessful bidders. This feedback can clarify why their bids were not selected, contributing to the overall transparency of the process and allowing bidders to improve in future tenders. The LOI is a critical tool during the bid evaluation process in ICB, serving multiple functions from communicating preliminary selection to ensuring the process adheres to the principles of transparency and fairness. By providing a structured means for engaging with selected bidders, addressing disputes, and clarifying bid details, the LOI helps streamline the transition from bid evaluation to contract negotiation, ensuring a smooth and equitable procurement process. Memorandum of Understanding, MOU A Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, can play a significant role in the procurement process, particularly in complex projects or international competitive bidding. ICB scenarios. Although its function and timing differ from that of a letter of intent, LOI, an MOU is a formal agreement between two or more parties that establishes a partnership or cooperative arrangement. It outlines the intentions, roles, and objectives of the parties involved in a project or collaboration, serving as a foundation for future formal agreements. Here's how an MOU can be integrated into the procurement process. Before the bidding process, partnership formation, an MOU can be used to formalize the collaboration between entities, such as government bodies, international organizations, or private sector partners. Before initiating the ICB process, it can outline the framework for cooperation, roles, responsibilities, and shared goals for the project. Preparation and planning. In the context of project planning and preparation, an MOU can define the preliminary agreements on project scope, funding arrangements, technical standards, and other critical aspects that need to be agreed upon before launching the bidding process. During the bid evaluation process, joint ventures and consortiums, bidders, especially in large-scale projects, might form joint ventures or consortiums to enhance their technical and financial capacity. An MOU among these parties can outline the structure of the consortium, roles of each member, and their collective approach to the project, which is crucial for the bid evaluation. Clarifying intentions. While not directly involved in the evaluation of bids, an MOU between the procuring entity and external stakeholders, like technical advisors, funding agencies or regulatory bodies, can clarify the project's broader objectives and ensure alignment among all parties. After the bidding process, framework for collaboration, post-bid evaluation, an MOU between the winning bidder and the procuring entity or among multiple project stakeholders, can serve as a preliminary framework for collaboration before the final contracts are drafted and signed. This can be particularly useful in multi-phase projects or where multiple contracts are anticipated. Setting the stage for contract negotiation. An MOU can outline the principles and key terms that will guide the contract negotiation process, providing a clear roadmap for finalizing the contract. This is especially useful in complex projects where negotiations might be lengthy and involve multiple stakeholders. Legal nature and implications. Non-binding nature. Like LOIs, MOUs are generally non-binding in nature, meaning they do not legally compel the parties to finalize a contract. However, they represent a serious commitment to collaborate and move forward with the project. Foundation for trust. 
An MOU can build trust among parties, demonstrating a commitment to the project and laying the groundwork for successful contract negotiations and project implementation. While an MOU plays a different role than an LOI in the procurement process, it is equally important for establishing a clear understanding and agreement among parties at various stages of a project from pre-bid collaborations and clarifying project objectives to forming consortia and setting the stage for contract negotiations, an MOU can facilitate smooth progress and alignment among stakeholders, contributing to the overall success of the project. Letter of Acceptance, LOA A letter of acceptance, LOA, is a critical document in the procurement process, especially within the context of International Competitive Bidding, ICB. It marks a definitive point in the project timeline, signifying the transition from the bidding phase to the formal engagement of services or procurement of goods. The LOA is issued by the procuring entity to the successful bidder, formally indicating that their bid has been accepted and that the procuring entity intends to enter into a contract with them. Here's how and when the LOA comes into action. After bid evaluation and selection. Final selection. Once the bid evaluation process is complete and a bidder has been selected as the winner based on the evaluation criteria, which could include technical capabilities, financial offer, compliance with the tender requirements, etc., the procuring entity prepares to issue the LOA. Notification of Award The LOA serves as the official notification to the successful bidder that they have been awarded the contract. It confirms the selection decision and indicates the procuring entity's intention to proceed with contract finalization. Role of LOA in the procurement process. Commencement of contract negotiations. The issuance of the LOA typically triggers the start of contract negotiations. It outlines the terms under which the contract will be awarded and may include or reference the price, scope, timeline, and any other relevant conditions agreed upon during the bidding process. Legal implications. While the LOA itself is a formal acceptance of the bid, it might not be legally binding until the contract is signed. However, it represents a strong commitment from the procuring entity and is treated with significant importance by both parties. Preparation for contract signing. The LOA allows the successful bidder to begin mobilizing resources, securing financing, and undertaking other preparatory activities required for the project, confident in the knowledge that they will be entering into a contract. It sets the stage for the final contract signing, which formalizes the engagement. Differences between LOA, LOI, and MOU LOA versus LOI While a letter of intent, LOI, indicates a preliminary agreement or intention to negotiate a contract, a letter of acceptance, LOA, is a step further, signifying that the negotiation phase has been concluded successfully and the bidder has been selected to execute the project. The LOI might be used earlier in the process, especially if there are details that need to be finalized before issuing an LOA. LOA versus MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, is often used to establish a general agreement on cooperation or partnership between parties, possibly before the bidding process begins or among consortium members. It is broader and less specific about project details than an LOA, which is focused on a specific procurement and signifies the acceptance of a bid. The letter of acceptance is a pivotal document in the procurement process, marking the end of the bidding phase and the beginning of the formal contractual relationship between the procuring entity and the successful bidder. It signifies the procuring entity's commitment to proceed with the awarded bidder and sets the foundation for the contractual obligations that will govern the project's execution. Contract Agreement In the procurement process, particularly within the framework of International Competitive Bidding, ICB, the contract agreement is the culminating document that formalizes the relationship between the procuring entity and the successful bidder. It follows the issuance of the Letter of Acceptance, LOA, which signifies the procuring entity's intention to award the contract to the selected bidder. The contract agreement, however, is the legally binding document that details the rights, responsibilities, terms, and conditions under which the work will be performed or the goods services will be provided. Here's a closer look at the role and components of the contract agreement in this process. Role of the contract agreement. Legal binding. Unlike the LOA, which is a formal notification of bid acceptance, the contract agreement is a legally enforceable document. It binds both parties to the terms and conditions outlined within, including scope of work, payment schedules, quality standards, timelines, and penalties for non-compliance. Detailed terms. 
The agreement provides comprehensive details of the project, including technical specifications, financial arrangements, project management and reporting structures, and dispute resolution mechanisms. Risk management. It outlines the risks associated with the project and specifies the allocation and management of these risks between the parties. Amendments and modifications. The agreement includes provisions for how changes to the contract can be made, ensuring flexibility to accommodate necessary adjustments while maintaining the integrity of the original agreement. Components of the contract agreement. While the specific contents of a contract agreement can vary depending on the project and the jurisdiction, typical components include 1. Parties to the contract. Identification of the procuring entity and the contractor, including legal names and addresses. Two. Scope of work, detailed description of the work to be performed, goods to be supplied, or services to be provided. 3. Contract price and payment terms, total contract value, payment schedule terms and conditions, including any provisions for advance payments, retainage, or performance bonds. 4. Project schedule, key milestones, deadlines, and the overall timeline for project completion. 5. Quality and performance standards, specifications for the quality of work or goods services provided, including compliance with industry standards and performance benchmarks. 6. Change management, procedures for handling changes in scope, schedule, or contract terms. 7. Liabilities and indemnities, allocation of liabilities between the parties, including indemnification clauses. 8. Force majeure, provisions for unforeseeable circumstances that prevent parties from fulfilling their contractual obligations. 9. Dispute resolution, mechanisms for resolving disputes which may include negotiation, mediation, arbitration, or litigation. 10. Termination, conditions under which the contract may be terminated by either party, including consequences of termination. 11. Confidentiality and intellectual property, provisions protecting sensitive information and specifying the ownership of intellectual property developed during the project. 12. Signatures. Legal signatures of authorized representatives of both parties, making the document binding. The contract agreement is the definitive and binding document that establishes the contractual relationship between the procuring entity and the contractor following the ICB process. It encapsulates all terms, conditions, and expectations for the execution of the project, providing a legal framework for project management, performance monitoring, and risk allocation. This agreement is essential for ensuring that both parties have a clear, mutual understanding of their obligations and the standards by which the project will be executed, thereby laying the groundwork for successful project completion. Bid Security Bid Security is a financial guarantee that bidders submit along with their bid in a procurement process, particularly in contexts involving International Competitive Bidding ICB. Its primary purpose is to ensure that bidders do not withdraw their bids within the validity period specified in the bid documents or fail to enter into a contract if their bid is accepted. Bid security is a critical component of the bidding process, designed to protect the procuring entity against the risk of a bidder's failure to commit to the project after being awarded. Here's how bid security interacts with and affects the Letter of Intent LOI, Memorandum of Understanding MAO, and Contract Agreement. Bid Security and LOI Letter of Intent Commitment Assurance Bid security reinforces the seriousness and commitment of bidders when submitting their proposals. When an LOI is issued to a successful bidder, the presence of bid security ensures that the bidder is less likely to withdraw or fail to proceed to contract negotiations. Transition to contract negotiation, the retention or return of bid security upon issuing an LOI can be contingent on the bidder's continued willingness to enter into a contract. If the bidder proceeds as outlined in the LOI, bid security is typically returned or transitioned into performance security for the contract execution phase. Bid Security and MAO Memorandum of Understanding Foundation Bid Security and Contract Agreement Conversion or Replacement Once a bid is accepted and a contract agreement is to be signed, the bid security may be returned to the bidder or converted into performance security, ensuring the contractor's fulfillment of obligations under the contract. This transition is crucial for maintaining financial assurance beyond the bidding phase into the project execution. 
Condition for contract signing, the release of bid security is often conditional upon the successful signing of the contract agreement and the submission of any required performance security. This ensures that the bidder is financially incentivized to finalize the contract and commence with the project. General Impact of Bid Security Financial Assurance Bid security provides financial assurance to the procuring entity that selected bidders will honor their commitments, thereby minimizing the risk of project delays or the need to retender. Filtering serious bidders, the requirement for bid security discourages non-serious or underprepared bidders from participating in the tender process, as it poses a financial risk to them if they cannot commit to the contract. Encouraging diligence, bidders are more likely to submit well-considered and realistic bids if they know that withdrawing after selection will result in the forfeiture of their bid security. Conclusion Bid security plays a pivotal role in ensuring the integrity and seriousness of the bidding process in ICB. While it directly impacts the transition from bid submission to the signing of the contract agreement by providing a financial guarantee of the bidder's intentions, its influence on the LOI and MOU phases is more indirect, serving as a testament to the bidder's commitment and readiness to engage in the project. This mechanism ensures that only serious and capable bidders are considered, facilitating a smoother and more reliable path to project initiation and execution. In the intricate world of professional relationships and ventures, a well-drafted letter of intent, or LOI, stands as a beacon of clarity and intent. Recognizing this, our team of experts has meticulously developed a versatile collection of sample LOI templates designed to navigate you through various critical scenarios. Whether it's launching a new project, forging strategic partnerships, making purchases, or submitting bid proposals, we've got you covered. Our curated templates address the essentials of crafting a compelling LOI blending a foundational structure with the flexibility to tailor content to your unique needs. Here's a glimpse of what we offer. For project initiators, our letter of intent for project name template lays the groundwork for a clear project outline and objectives. If partnership or collaboration is on your horizon, the letter of intent for strategic partnership between your company name and partner company name will guide you in setting mutual goals and expectations. In cases of procurement, our letter of intent to purchase goods slash services from supplier name ensures your terms and conditions are transparent and negotiable. And for those eyeing competitive bids, the letter of intent to submit bid for project name template helps articulate your proposal's value and distinction. All these resources are readily accessible on our website with a direct link provided in the description below. We believe that a powerful LOI not only communicates your intentions, but also paves the way for fruitful negotiations and collaborations. Thus, we encourage you to leverage these templates, personalize them to your context, and step forward with confidence in your professional engagements. Remember, the art of communication is key in the realm of business and endeavors. With our expertly designed templates, you're equipped to articulate your vision and objectives with precision and persuasiveness. Visit our website, explore our templates, and let them serve as your guide to crafting letters that resonate with purpose and clarity. Now let's talk about comprehensive overview of the purpose and key differences between a letter of intent, LOI, a letter of acceptance, LOA, and a contract agreement. Each of these documents serves a crucial role in the stages of a business agreement and project execution, starting with the LOI. The purpose of a letter of intent is to express a preliminary intention to enter into an agreement or negotiation. It outlines the basic terms and shows interest in proceeding but is generally non-binding. It includes preliminary terms of the agreement, the intentions of the parties, and possible conditions for negotiation. It's used early in negotiations or at the start of the procurement process, marking the initial discussions upon identifying a potential vendor or partner. The impact it has on the project is setting the stage for formal negotiations and can help in planning and resource allocation. 
Its primary differences are that it's an early, exploratory document, it lacks detailed terms of the project, and it has a non-binding nature. Moving on to the LOA. This document formally notifies the successful bidder that their proposal has been accepted and that the issuer intends to enter into a contract with them. It signifies the intent to create a binding contract and may include conditions that must be met for the contract to be finalized. The LOA includes a confirmation of bid acceptance, the next steps towards contract signing, and any immediate conditions or requirements. It's issued after the bid evaluation process and marks the transition from bidding to contract finalization, allowing for initial project mobilization. It acts as a transitionary document, signaling the successful bid and marking the intent to formalize the relationship, yet it's still not the final agreement. Finally, we examine the contract agreement. This document is a legally binding contract formalizing the terms and conditions of the agreement between the parties, including scope, price, timelines, and obligations. It obligates the parties to fulfill the terms and conditions within the document. Detailed project scope and specifications, financial terms, payment schedules, legal obligations and rights of each party, and procedures for dispute resolution are all encompassed. It's finalized after the LOA, detailing the comprehensive agreement for the project or service delivery. It formalizes the engagement and governs the relationship throughout the project, dictating the execution of the project, including delivery, quality, and compliance. It stands as the final, detailed agreement and governs the entire project or service delivery process. By understanding these documents, you are equipped to navigate the various stages of business engagements with greater clarity and efficiency. Whether you're at the initial intention stage, ready to mobilize a project post-bid, or finalizing a binding agreement, knowing these differences ensures that you can manage and execute your projects with confidence. The flowchart outlines the typical steps involved in the procurement and project life cycle, especially in contexts where formal bidding and contractual agreements are required, such as in government or large corporate projects. Here's a breakdown of each step in a way that's accessible to a broader audience. 1. Start. Project need identified. The process begins when an organization identifies a need for a project. This could be anything from constructing a new building, upgrading IT systems, to providing community services. 2. Preparation and issuance of RFP, request for proposal. The organization prepares a detailed document called a request for proposal, RFP. This document outlines what the project involves, what the organization needs from vendors, and how vendors can submit their bids or proposals to win the project. 3. Bid submission by vendors. Vendors or contractors interested in the project submit their bids, detailing how they propose to meet the project's requirements, including timelines, costs, and any other relevant information. 4. Bid Evaluation Process The organization reviews all bids received to evaluate which vendor best meets the project's needs based on criteria set out in the RFP. This could include factors like cost, experience, and proposed solution. 5. Issue LOI, Letter of Intent, to Selected Bidders The organization sends a letter of intent to the bidders they are considering for the project. This letter is not a final agreement but indicates the organization's interest in possibly working with the bidder. It might invite the bidder to negotiate further. 6. Bidder Responses and Negotiations The selected bidders respond to the LOI and there may be a period of negotiation to finalize the project's details, such as cost adjustments, timelines, and specific requirements. 7. Issue LOA, Letter of Acceptance, to Winning Bidder Once a final bidder is chosen, the organization issues a letter of acceptance. This letter formally notifies the winning bidder that they have been selected to execute the project, moving towards finalizing a formal contract. 8. Final Contract Negotiations the organization and the winning bidder negotiate the final terms of the contract. This involves detailed discussions to ensure both parties agree on all aspects of the project, including obligations, timelines, payments, and any other legalities. 9. Sign Contract Agreement A contract agreement is signed by both parties. 
This legally binding document outlines every detail of the project and the agreement between the organization and the vendor. It includes everything agreed upon during negotiations. 10. Project Execution With the contract signed, the project officially begins. The vendor starts work according to the contract's terms, and the organization oversees the project to ensure it meets the agreed standards and timelines. 11. And Project Completion The project is completed, and all contractual obligations are fulfilled. The end of the project is marked by the delivery of the final product or service, and, typically, a review of the project to ensure all terms of the contract were met. This flowchart provides a simplified view of the procurement and project life cycle, highlighting the critical steps from the initial need through to project completion. It underscores the importance of formal documents like the LOI, LOA, and contract agreement in guiding the process and ensuring clarity and agreement between the organization and the vendor. Here is another flowchart to better understand the whole process. 1. Start. Project need identified. Every project begins with identifying a need, such as constructing a building, upgrading IT systems, or procuring services. 2. Preparation and issuance of RFP. Request for proposal. The organization prepares a document detailing what they need from potential vendors and invites them to submit bids. 3. Bid submission by vendors. Interested vendors submit their proposals, outlining how they can meet the project's requirements and at what cost. 4. Bid evaluation process. The organization reviews all bids to determine which best meets the project's needs. This stage involves a decision node. If a bid is successful, the process moves to issuing a letter of intent, LOI. Unsuccessful bidders are informed of their status. 5. Issue LOI to selected bidders. The LOI is sent to bidders whose proposals are interesting but require further negotiation or clarification. It's not a final agreement but shows intent to proceed. 6. Bidder responses. Selected bidders respond to the LOI, leading to another decision point. If they accept, negotiations begin. If they decline or negotiations are unsuccessful, they are considered unsuccessful in this context. 7. Negotiations. Detailed discussions between the organization and the bidder to finalize the terms of the project. 8. Finalize negotiations. A critical decision node where Successful negotiations lead to issuing a letter of acceptance, LOA. Unsuccessful negotiations result in the bidder being informed of their unsuccessful status. 9. Issue LOA to winning bidder. The LOA formally notifies the winning bidder that they have been selected to proceed with the contract signing. 10. Final contract negotiations. Final discussions to iron out any remaining details before signing the contract. 11. Contract signed. The pivotal decision point where if yes, the contract agreement is signed, formalizing the engagement. If no, the process may end or return to previous stages for re-evaluation. 12. Signed contract agreement. The legal document outlining all terms and conditions of the project is signed by both parties. 13. Project execution. With the contract signed, the project moves into the execution phase, where the work outlined in the contract is carried out. 14. And project completion. The project is completed, fulfilling the need identified at the start. This flowchart provides a step-by-step -step visualization of the procurement process, from the initial need through to project completion, highlighting the critical decision points and outcomes along the way. It's designed to help anyone involved in or affected by procurement understand the sequence of actions and decisions that lead to the successful completion of a project. Let's face it, the world of construction contracts can feel like a minefield sometimes. All those technical terms and legalese can really do a number on your blood pressure when you're trying to make sense of it all. But take a deep breath, because videos like this are here to be your lifeline. By breaking down those dense clauses into plain English, we're arming you with the insights to navigate contracts confidently. If you felt that weight lift after watching, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. That simple like is a vote saying, yes, I want more clarity on this stuff. But don't stop there. Pay it forward by sharing this video with others in your network. We all know someone who has lost sleep pondering the finer points of indemnification or notification requirements. This is your chance to be their hero. And of course, for a steady supply of contract knowledge that declutters the jargon, subscribe to Growth Mindset Company right away. We're constantly tackling new topics and breaking them down into bite-sized, actionable tips. Ring that notification bell while you're at it. 
That way, you'll be the first to know whenever we post something new to make your job easier. At the end of the day, understanding contracts shouldn't be a headache. With resources like these, you can cut through the complexities and get straight to the heart of what matters. No more stressing, no more guessing, just confidence. Like, share, subscribe, it's your direct path to becoming a construction contract superhero.